Today we're going to set up an auto water change using the Ecotec Versus. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. I just finally got my two custom bins. I ordered these guys like about a month and a half ago. They're finally done and they're going to fit just inside this little nook and cranny here. I actually wanted to go a bit bigger but doing like true custom would have been about three times the price. So this is the closest size I could find and still get a nice big lid in the top for maintenance, mixing salt and all that jazz. And they're going to go right inside by the washing machine. Now remember, happy wife, happy life. So as much as I would love to consume this full space, you got to make the nice compromise. So got to leave a bit of a little countertop space on top, which is going to be for kind of laundry, for folding or maybe hanging stuff above it. And my water change bins are going to be below it. So I'm kind of just contemplating right now if I raise them up a little bit and leave a little room underneath for some bags of salt. But currently we have the Brute in there right now, which is my kind of current temporary bin. So just disconnecting this and I'm going to slide this one out and then we'll put the bins in and we'll see how we're doing for space and then decide our game plan from there. So after a bit of thought, I think I finally got my game plan worked out. So I'm going to plumb a float valve into each container. And the one into this one is going to be for my auto top off. So this will be the RODI. Now this one is going to be plumbed straight into the RODI unit. And I think I'm actually going to use two optical sensors, a high and a low. So I can make it auto fill itself when it gets low and auto turn off once it's full. And the float valve will just be acting as a backup. Now the second tank is going to be for salt water. And rather than putting a pump in it, I'm actually going to use one of my old MP40s in the last tank. So I still have an MP40. Now, if I use the MP40 on it, I don't have to make any holes in the bottom of the container. There's nothing to worry about for plumbing, and it's going to be an easy way to mix it. I got to clean the pump, can pop it out. It's going to be super duper easy. So I think I can use MP40, and I got a gap in the back, so that should hold the dry side. And I think that's going to work out really well. So MP40 in the back, and that's going to mix my salt water. I can create a scene through Mobius and say mix, you know, 100% for 24 hours and drop down to like 5 or 10% just to keep the water moving and keep everything fresh. So I think it's going to be a wicked way to do it. Now the next question you're going to ask is how do I get water from the ATU to the saltwater bin? I currently have this little Apex pump or P-mump P -mump for my auto top off. Now I did pick up a newer version of the pump. so. I'm going to put the new version of the pump in for my auto top off into this bin. So the new one's going to be in here. I'm going to use the old one to fill up this bin. Now these lines I already ran through the wall. So we see all these wires. So you can see I got a couple red tubes that are going to the drain directly. Uh, I got the blue one and got a white one. So those all come up and a bunch of them come up and over and through the floor. and they are plumbed into this lovely four pack of Versos. So this guy is running on continuous duty, running my calcium reactor. This guy has yet to be determined to the future. And these two are for auto water change. So the blue is for the fresh salt water. So this is gonna come from the second bin close to the wash and dryer. It's gonna bring my mixed salt water up into the tank. And the red one is for my wastewater. So it's gonna suck out of the sump and push it right down to the drain. I have been debating exactly I'm going to program it. One of my thoughts is to actually do it during feed mode. That way, if I put the water, the pump that's sucking, or sorry, the waste line, I could theoretically have it just above the water line. And so if for some reason it kicked on, it wouldn't actually suck any water unless the tank's in feed mode. So if I somehow make a scene so it kicks on during feed mode as the water rises, this would kick on, you know, suck out a gallon or whatever, gallon, gallon, half. And this one could add a gallon and a half. So I'm toying if I do it just during feed mode it kicks in, or if it does a very slow one throughout the day, or you know, maybe I just have a button to push it once a week, it is a larger water change. So we'll see. I'm still debating a little bit of the game plan exactly how we program it, but that'll be the easy part later. First step is just getting everything plumbed up. So that's kind of it for tonight. And tomorrow, hopefully afternoon, once my little bulkheads show up so I can do nice tight tidy connections, we'll get the rest of this all plumbed up. So we got the rest of our parts and we we're ready to get this set up. So I got a Neptune ATK that I kind of got just for parts. Uh, I got the FMM module. So I'm gonna use, uh, I got two of the magnetic optical sensors. And good idea, Jeff. I'm actually gonna do a high and a low in the RODI bin. 
that way when it's low, it can turn itself on and top itself off. Um, and I also got the newer pump. So I'm gonna use the new pump as my main ATO pump, and I'm gonna use the old ATK pump to pump from the RODI to the saltwater bin. So I also got dual float valves for that purpose. So we'll have one for the RODI as like a safety backup for filling this bin. Uh, optical will be the main, float will be the backup. Um, the secondary bin, we're gonna have one for the pump. So if I, you know, forgot the pump on or whatever, it would stop it from overflowing. And the second one for filling from RDI. So if I want to fill faster, I can have both going, right? We'll fill it up nice and quick. Now I also got um, a Neptune solenoid, and that's gonna be to turn on the auto filling of the RDI bin. So once it gets down to almost the bottom, it fills itself back up. Now, future project, I'm gonna build some kind of an automated flush system with probably some more solenoids and Arduino, but we'll probably do that one in, you know, sometime in the next month or so once we get this all set up and working, first of all. Now, in the salt water bin, got my old MP40, so this is gonna sit near the bottom of it. This is gonna mix up the salt. Um, that way, there's no pipes coming in or out. Um, I had to go through and dig up the spacer, so that, since it's the thinner plastic. And with these, I go put a bunch of these little bulkheads, so I'm gonna use these to go through the side of the bin. And I sorted these guys off Amazon. I can link to those if you guys want them. And as well as some of the 90s. So this will just make a nice connector on the back of the bin to go from one bin to the next bin. All right, so let's get to drilling and let's get these babies plumbed up. Now we are going to rinse these out, but I'm going to wait until after I drill them, just in case there's any little shavings inside. And we're going to start with the float switches. Now to drill them, I'm actually going to be using a step drill bit. Now the nice thing about this is if you don't have to have a ton of different hole sizes around, you just slowly make the hole bigger until it's just the right size. Now for this last little bit, I'm actually just going to see if I can thread it in, and which will give it kind of a tighter seal as well. Now just to make sure there's no funky manufacturing oils or any little particles on it, we're going to give them a quick rinse in the shower. Now the main pump. I have it ever so slightly suspended. I did that on purpose, that way it's going to get quieter and it's going to reduce any vibrations in there. Um, the one to transfer the water is just touching, which should be okay. But the one that kicks on constantly is going to be suspended just like half an inch above it. It's going to keep it super duper quiet. So it's been filling for a while. Come down and get a little float fill. I do have the optical sensors now all hooked up. So the bottom one showing is closed. If we look up here, got to tie up the wires a bit more, but we have FMM with three optical sensors and the MP40. And I also have actually found a little LED strip kicking around. So I added some, some room lighting. So it kind of lights up the workspace when I'm working, if I want to check on stuff. And there's a little remote somewhere up here, or if I may even do some little like breakout box, some kind of a sensor to auto turn on when I open the door. So that'd be kind of a little future project, but we got this baby all hooked up to the bins and letting it fill. So the only thing left to do is hook up my little transfer pump and that has the little 24 volt Neptune type of plug. I think it's like an ATX. Um, and I also got the power supply that came with the FMM module. Now that wire will not reach the FMM module. I debated just plug it into that. So if I can see if I can find an extension, if not, I might just cut off the end and put on a barrel plug and just have it plugged in directly to this, but we'll see. I feel like I might have an adapter cord from cutting one in the past for LED lights or something. So do a bit of hunting. If not, we'll hack it up and we'll make it work. So we filled up the ATO container last night and the salt has been filling since this morning. And in the meantime, I just got a bit of wood cause I'm gonna make a little kind of folding shelf that will go up here. That way I can open and access the barrels when I need to. And I'm gonna use a little piano hinge. I think I'm gonna make that so it folds over. And then I'm gonna put a little backsplash on that chunk just to prevent any, you know, folding socks or anything falling behind it. And yeah, I think it's gonna be work out pretty well. All right, so I just whipped up a quick little shelf for just folding laundry, putting your basket, whatever on here. And I may have to do a little, little post on this corner, may or may not matter, we'll see. 
And when you want to access your barrels, fold it up and look at that, got access to everything. Now, just because I put a little backsplash on, just, you know, stop socks or whatever falling, I may need to do a little hook or something to make it stay up, but, but yeah, nice easy way, access all your stuff. And when you're not using it, got your nice little laundry folding table. So there you go. Happy, happy reefer, happy spouse. The next put a little kind of like fold out hanging rack or something like that. And there you go. We got full use of our laundry area. I got my auto water chain station and everybody's happy. So now that everything is built, it is time to mix some salt. So we got the pump spooled right up full. Lots of mixing action going on in there. All right guys, so now we're about to dump in a bunch of salt. I'm gonna have to figure out exactly how much I need to add to this, so it's gonna be a bit of dumping and testing for now. But eventually I might see if I can figure out exactly what kind of portions or rations in this no-brainer, dump it in and mix it up. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed this on kind of how I built my saltwater mixing station. Uh, next episode or next update probably I'll show you guys how to set up the Versa for the auto water change. Uh, I just realized I'm a couple little connectors short from how I want to set this up so I ordered those so I'll have to wait a couple days or two. Um, that I'm still waiting for the saltwater to mix before we actually fully get it automated so that will come soon but yeah as always guys if you enjoyed it hit that like button if you're new make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next update.